A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. School has started once again and being pretty busy over there. So yeah, hence this is the first video for this month after a little hiatus. X cubed is equal to 27. No, it's not only three, there are more. And this video might seem trivial to a lot of people, but I'm certain there are people out there who are going to like this video. And this is my job here on YouTube, okay? I just want to stay in the game. So chill videos are to expect it at some point um, after so many years here on YouTube. So try it out first and post your solution down there in the comments below. And now we are going to dive right in. So it's probably not a secret that one of the possible solutions here is 3 because we all know that 3 cubed is the same as 3 times 3 times 3 and this is 9 times 3 is 27. But as mentioned before there are more solutions. This right here is in fact the only real solution x being equal to 3 but we can go into a little bit more nifty detail here by subtracting 27 on both sides at first. And what we do here basically is we have created ourselves a third degree polynomial and by setting it equal to zero we are looking for the zeros of this very function. Now the cool thing about polynomials is that they can be factored into linear factors and we already know one linear factor namely x minus 3 because linear factors means if you plug an x value in then that part is gonna become zero and hence the whole polynomial is going to collapse into zero. Meaning we can turn this into its linear factors, namely one of those is going to be x minus 3 times another linear factor is equal to 0 that we don't know yet. Since this is a polynomial of the third degree, by decomposing it into linear factors we must get a third degree polynomial out once again, once we multiply everything out. This right here is a first degree polynomial, hence the polynomial inside the parentheses must be of second degree. But we don't know the coefficients yet apart from the leading coefficient because this must amount to 1 because it's a monic polynomial. So we have a leading term of x squared plus and the rest we don't know. I'm going to call it ax plus c. And you could do polynomial division obviously with that and that but I'm going to go this route because this is what always do. I always forget how to do polynomial division, so I'm doing this stuff here. <laughs> it gets you there too, so that's nice. Now we are going to multiply everything out, leaving us overall with x cubed plus ax squared plus c times x minus 3x squared and then minus 3 times a times x. And then why have I chosen c right here? Doesn't matter. This probably triggered a bunch of you guys, right? <laughs> because it's the third thing in here, hence c, I suppose. Um, minus 3c is equal to zero. And now we are just going to compare coefficients because this polynomial must be to this one right here. The leading coefficient is already good here, so this part works out. The only thing without an x is negative 3c, and we know what this must amount to, namely to negative 27. Hence, c must be equal to nine for this to hold c is equal to 9, so we are going to end up with x cubed minus 27. But we already, uh, we, we also have other parts right here to consider. We have plus ax squared minus 3x squared. We can bring this together by factoring out the uh, x squared and having in parentheses a minus 3. And we also have a part with x. We know that c is equal to 9, meaning if we were to factor x out, we are going to get um, 9 minus 3 times a and all of this is equal to 0. And now you might notice that we don't have an x squared and an x either here. Meaning those coefficients must be equal to 0. Meaning when is a minus 3 equal to 0? When a is equal to 3. Does this work for this part out too? 9 minus 3 times 3 is equal to 0. This works out. So that means if a is equal to 3 we are going to get the following linear factorization of our original polynomial, namely x plus 3 um, x squared plus 3x and plus 9 is equal to 0. And as mentioned before, 
those are linear factors, meaning if either of those is equal to zero, the whole polynomial collapses to zero. Meaning if we set this equal to zero, we are going to get our other two solutions for the original polynomial of x squared plus 3x plus 9 is equal to zero. And all we need to do now is we need to use the quadratic formula, for example, and get the job done. You could also use the same method once again right here and basically factor this into two parts. But for this, you kind of need to know what the roots are going to be. So you need to end up with the quadratic formula anyways. But yeah, um, x, 2 and 3 in this case, because this right here was x1, our 3 is going to be um, negative 3 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2 squared, which is going to be 9 over 4. And then we're going to have negative 9. And now you could let it be, but you are probably seeing a problem here. Namely, 9 over 4 is something around 2. Minus 9 is going to give us a negative number. Square root of a negative number is not going to yield the real solution. And why 3 is the only real solution here. But we are going to get two uh, imaginary solutions out, complex solutions. What we are going to do is we are going to um, bring the discriminant together and see what we are going to get. This part right here under the root, the discriminant is going to be, by expanding this by 4 over 4, gives us 36 over 4. So we have 9 minus 36 is going to give us 27 over 4. But with a negative side at the front, obviously, because we have 9 minus 36. And now we can split this up. The 27 over 4 is positive, so it, uh, as long as one of the parts of criminant is positive, we can break it up into the square root of negative 1, which by definition on the principal root is i. And other than that, we have the square root of 27 over 4, where one quarter is just one half. So by bringing all of this together, we are going to get x2 and 3. It's going to be equal to negative 3 over 2 plus or minus i over 2 times the square root of 27. Now you can go a bit further and see that square root of 27 is square root of 3 times square root of 9, and square root of 9 is 3. So this right here can in fact turn into um, negative 3 over 2 plus or minus 3 times i over 2 times the square root of 3. And 3 over 2 is a common factor, meaning we can also rewrite this into um, 3 over 2 times uh, negative 1 plus or minus i times square root of 3, which is the cleanest form, in my opinion, of the other two solutions that we can get. And yeah, this basically concludes it. Did you figure it out? Uh, maybe the video was interesting to you. And if you did like what you have seen today, maybe the contents of today's sponsor Preint could also be of interest to you. Now, what I did here was the algebraic way of calculating the roots of such a simple polynomial or such an easy expression. But there's actually something different you can do and those are called the roots of unity. Imagine you are in the imaginary world, basically, on the unit circle. And what you can do is you have the third power, you can split this circle up into three equal parts. And by taking the magnitude of those, you can actually get yourself those expressions too, namely this one that we have right here and x being equal to 3 here. And using such tools, graphics to your advantage in mathematics is what Preint is there for. Preint is your source for some of the best online learning content that you can find out there on the internet. Doesn't matter if you want to learn something about mathematics today, physics, computer science, chemistry. Really doesn't matter. What they deliver to you is an extremely well thought out learning concept, which applies a lot of visuals and graphics that you can use to your advantage to get better understanding of certain problems at hand. For example, understanding complex numbers, or maybe even trigonometry or stuff like general relativity. As mentioned before, they basically cover everything that you can quite possibly think of in the STEM field. And it starts from high school mathematics and goes up to college mathematics. So even if you are a student at university at the moment, you can most definitely benefit from the services of Onprint. And I invite you to try it out today for completely free by using my link at the top of the description, printorg slash 30 day free trial of amazing awesomeness. You can also use my QR code somewhere up here in the corner that you can use to see if their course concept is indeed something for you, if you could benefit from their graphics and their completely unique approach to mathematics. 
for example. And if you feel like this could turn into a long-term relationship between you and Priyan, because you know, you never really stop learning. You always want to strive for learning new stuff on a daily basis. Then by using my link completely down there in the description, the first 200 people to do so get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which is an amazing deal. You should just give it a shot and see for yourself. I highly recommend it and I always recommend it to my students too, because this way they can try to understand the topic better and just use graphics and this really helps a lot. Students really like using graphics because it's just something that they can see, use, feel and it's better than the abstract stuff. So maybe it's also something for you. Check it out. And this concludes today's video. I thank you guys for watching. And if you want to see more, just keep watching, I suppose, and subscribe. See ya.